The 8th of September 2017 marks an important day both for the shipping industry and for the environment because this day is the entry into force of IMO's Ballast Water Management Convention. The spread of invasive aquatic species in ships' ballast water has long been recognised as a major environmental threat and this convention addresses it at the global level. So what does it mean for ships? From the day this convention enters into force, all ships engaged in international traffic must manage their ballast water so as to avoid the introduction of alien species into coastal waters. For most ships, that means either exchanging their ballast water or treating it using an approved ballast water management system. Initially, there will be two different standards corresponding to these two options. The D1 standard requires ships to exchange their ballast water in open seas, away from coastal waters. Ideally, this means at least 200 nautical miles from land and in water at least 200 metres deep. By doing this, fewer organisms will survive and so ships will be less likely to introduce potentially harmful species when they do release their ballast water. D2 is a performance standard which specifies the maximum amount of viable organisms allowed to be discharged, including specified indicator microbes harmful to human health. From day one, all ships must conform to at least the D1 standard and all new ships to the D2 standard. By 2024, all ships, new and existing, will have to conform to the D2 standard. For most existing ships, this involves installing special equipment, so there's an implementation timetable for them based on the date of their IOPPC renewal survey. But implementation of the convention actually begins straight away. For example, all ships, new and existing, must have a ship-specific ballast water management plan and an international ballast water management certificate issued by or on behalf of their flag state to confirm their compliance. Not only that, all ships will also have to carry a ballast water record book to provide evidence that ballast water procedures have been carried out correctly and all ships will be subject to inspections by port state control to confirm compliance, which may include actually sampling a ship's ballast water as well as inspecting the documentation. So what does this mean for the environment? Well, it's good news, and again, from day one. The requirement to exchange or treat ballast water applies to all ships immediately and without delay, which means something that's been identified as a major environmental threat is being actively addressed and IMO has delivered another significant milestone for the health of our planet.